Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia. Welcome to our early game guide for all the different factions in Total War Three Kingdom. I'll be playing every single faction on Legendary Legendary difficulty, a 40 minute battle time limit. It's pretty standard of what I play on my Let's Play campaigns. Um, I'm going to be showcasing the early turns of each faction to guide you through some uh, tips and tricks to surviving the early game and setting yourself up for a comfortable and fun-filled mid-game. And today we're starting off with Ma Teng. He is known as Protector of the West and he is a vanguard uh, faction leader. He specializes in shock cavalry and there's a bonus income to silk and spice as well as a discount for his faction unique Tiang units. Uh, talking about faction unique units, he has three different type of Tiang cavalry units. Uh, basically archers, uh, shot cavalry, spear holding cavalry, and sword holding melee cavalry. Uh, he is a governor, so he cannot become an emperor himself. What he needs to do is to capture all three governors, uh, emperor's seat himself to uh, reunite China and become the victor at the end. His faction unique building is the Xiliang supply line, which replaces the uh, military infrastructure building. Uh, it's quite different uh, in terms of building it uh, provides public order as well as food uh, which is uh, very unique um, which also help you supplement because you start out in the western region of the map without much supplies of food um, we'll talk about the characters once we load up into the game but if we just quickly look at the map here uh, we are allies with Han Sui uh, who is one of our old friends, and we also are old friends with Dong Zhuo, who is the tyrant. So we're one of the few factions in the game, probably the only one if I think about it, that doesn't start out at war with the Han Empire, which is all these uh, grayed out regions on the map. So that's going to be giving us a little bit of different flavor, and being friends with Dong Zhuo brings a lot of benefits, which I will show you. So let's jump in here and get started. All right, so we loaded up in here. Uh, like all other factions, we start with a pretty simple mission of fighting the army right in front of you. In this case, it's Wang Du. Uh, it's a yellow turban force, just very simple army, no range units, so really not going to get any casualties no matter how you fight this, unless you uh, send in your own infantry to clash with them. So that's not smart. Let's not do that. And if we look at the map, we have Wu Du Silk Trader and Jincheng's horse pasture as our two territories that we start out with. We don't have a settlement uh, as in a city, uh, which is Wudu Town, which is really close. That's part of our first mission. So first thing first, uh, we look at what we got. Okay, we got a white stallion and we got a stone rooster. And that's pretty good. These are not going to be game changing items. Uh, I don't want to be uh, randomly into like a silver weapon or something that might make you feel like uh, that had a huge impact on us. So Ma Teng is a vanguard, like we said. He has Cruel, which is a bit rough because you get minus four public order. This is going to mess up a lot of your early uh, cities if you want to build up uh, peasantry income, if you want to build up um, basically a multiplier from population growth. It's going to be very difficult to do that. Uh, he's loyal, which doesn't really affect him because he's a faction leader. And careless doesn't really do much unless you are prone to walking into ambushes. Uh, one thing to note, uh, you start out with flexibility as a skill. The minus 25% redeployment cost discount is going to be huge here and something we're going to abuse uh, going forward as a Ma Teng Let's Play because the roads out west is terrible. So you want to do a lot of redeployment and you don't want to do a lot of traveling on the road. So for him, we're actually going to give him the Clay Dog instead of the Stone Rooster. Clay Dog is the item that Ma Teng faction starts with. No matter how you random into an uh, ancillary item, you'll always start with the Clay Dog. Six authority points uh, is much better on him because he's your faction leader. You want to get that satisfaction up. The Stone Rooster, the instinct point, will give to Pang De, who is another character we start out with. So Pang De here is a semi-unique uh, character. He has a generic model and a portrait, but he has a background called the White Horse General, uh, which is quite funny here because if you notice, he's a champion, but instead of a brown horse, which give resolve, he can only equip White Horse because he's the White Horse General. So in this case, we're going to give him the White Stallion. Kind of fitting that we got this uh, horse. Give him the Stone Rooster for extra combat capabilities, melee damage here. And we're going to switch his weapon. 
So the spear is kind of modest, uh, it's a very balanced weapon, but n that's not what we're looking for. Uh, we can either go with the glaive, which does more base damage, also gives a little charge bonus because we're going to be using our generals to kill a lot of infantry, or we can go with a great axe. Uh, much more armor piercing damage, uh, adds a little bit of health with resolve. We're going to stick to this weapon first for the first fight because he'll be dueling the enemy general for us. So this uh, extra armor piercing damage as well as extra health is going to be more relevant. And later on, on our second battle, when we attack the town, we're going to switch over to the glaive, which we're going to use the charge bonus to do more damage on the enemy infantry. So before we fight this, um, in most situations, I prefer to do our diplomacy first when we, our army are at full strength. So this way we give the biggest amount of uh, attitude points towards us because our army is at full strength. And we have friends. We have Dong Zhuo as our friend, and we're going to abuse this. We're going to secure a very lucrative trade agreement, and we're going to make him pay us for it. So this is pretty standard. Uh, we're just trying to build up our economy early on. Uh, because if you if you take pay attention to Ma Teng, one of his things is he has a poor family background. So he gets less money from uh, family wealth. Um, the family estate usually is 2000 he only gets 1.5 because uh, Maton has poor background as one of his traits uh, as protector of the West. Right? If you see, it says poor background here, minus 25% income from family estate. Kind of sucks. Um, I will go into his lore sometime in the future, uh, probably another um, episode when we talk about the Leon Rebellion, because that's a future DLC. And we'll talk about his father and why he's of poor family background. But now, with all that settled, we'll just jump into the fight over here. Uh, we'll just jump straight in. Um, I will talk a little bit about the battle once we're inside, but most of this will cut out. All right, so we loaded up in here. Uh, there's really not much to say about this battle. Uh, just keep your infantry back. Uh, you can use your archers, you can use your cavalry. Uh, both are fine, but you could just use your generals. Uh, this fight is quite straightforward. You want Pang De, your champion, to be dueling the dueling, and Ma Teng to be fighting the infantry. Uh, main reason is Pang De has hamstring, which actually does damage against um, enemy generals. Ma Teng only has Roar of the Beast, which is excellent uh, against infantry. You reduce their morale by 18, so that would be very nice. So we have him run forward first, accept the duel, and Ma Teng can just run up and uh, attack the infantry. So most of the damage is going to be on charge, obviously, so you want to get a good clean charge. Alright, we knocked them off, great. This is where that big axe come in handy. If you stick to the spear, you're going to be taking a lot more damage than if you have the axe. And then we're going to obviously use our ability. Alright, so let's get a nice charge. So to get damage, you want to charge where it's thick. Like if it's not thick, you're not going to do much. And the key is we don't want to stand there and get hit. That's what we don't want. So we want to just rotate a little bit behind. Get chased, run away a little bit. We want to fight on our own terms, basically. Um, and then once we see them crowded up and we're not getting chased, we just charge back. See, a lot of damage. And then you just kite. And I'm going to cut it out because the rest of this fight, it's basically Ma Teng kiting these two using abilities whenever he has it. And Peng, Teng, Peng De killing the other general and joining in on the fun. Alright, see that was a bad charge. But yep, yeah, we're going to cut it out. I'll show you guys the post-battle screen results. See you then. Alrighty, so that was simple. Of course you can have your archers and cavalry come help. They probably won't take much damage, and your general didn't take much damage either here. Um, the damage is going to come in the next fight. So we win this one, you get the standard taste of victory, more military supply, more morale. And we have the mission to capture Wudu the town. Uh, we get public water and faction support, and we're going to do just that. Uh, extra experience for Ma Teng, but no one leveled up. Um, I think it's because we spread the kill around a little evenly. Uh, if we focus on giving Pang De the experience, he probably would have leveled up because he's only level 1. But anyways, we'll be fighting Wu Du. Uh, if you notice, why is Ma Teng's start potentially hard? Uh, if we take a peek out here, uh, we will be fighting it, don't worry. It's difficult because A, you have to fight a town, 
which is quite difficult because they have a lot of arrow towers in the beginning. Another difficult part is because Gongdu starts right next to you. This is Gongdu's start location. And he has some awesome units. Guardian of the Land, super, super strong unit if they get engaged with your infantry. They are very prone to cavalry, uh, not cavalry, um, archers, because they have no range block chance. But even then, a uh, standard archer fighting something with such high armor is not going to be very effective. He has spear units uh, with good armor and good range block chance. And more uh, painfully, he has three horseback huntsmen. So they are ranged cavalry units. So your Z militia, which is usually excellent against cavalry, it's going to have a hard time fighting these because they're not going to just charge into you. Uh, anyways, we can't avoid fighting him altogether and just destroy him in another way because we can take this fight without taking any casualty. Uh, if you can fight this battle cleanly, he will not attack you. If you fight this and you're weak, he'll fight that fight and immediately fight you. And that's not what, what we want. So let's just take this fight and I'll show you how to fight it pretty cleanly. All right, so we're loaded up in here. Uh, the weather really doesn't matter. Um, I guess fog would be okay because you're trying to avoid getting killed by the arrow towers. But since the arrow towers nerf, uh, this has gotten a lot easier. Uh, this is the gate we want to come in uh, from because this gate has no other gate covering uh, its fire power. So we just have to run through two arrow tower worth of fire instead of a bunch as they overlap over there. And we're only going to run in with our generals. And they can start out hiding in the tree line here and they'll pop out here and run all the way in and to make sure there's no enemy here stopping them from getting a clean entry we're gonna lay our units elsewhere to distract the enemy uh, we've done similar strategies before in our let's plays uh, when we are sieging towns if you spread your units out the enemy will guard every entrance and it will spread their forces thin uh, same idea here uh, we're not going to use any of these units because remember our goal is to make sure none of them die. So let me jump in here and just give you guys a taste of what the idea is and we'll cut the rest of the battle out. So we start battle. The enemy are guarding those gates and we're trying to get a clean release into the area here. Of course, we're going to get shot by these arrow towers, uh, but that we can't do anything about that. Oh, I did forget to switch weapons, uh, which is silly me, but ideally you want to switch to the glaive, which gives extra charge damage, because most of our fight here is us charging into these units. Um, we can't do much about getting shot, we're just going to get shot, Ma Tong's going to come with low health. And that's fine, because even if uh, Gongdu and Zhang Kai attack us, those two are very strong generals, we were never going to duel them uh, in the first place. We were going to rely on the arrow towers and rely on our cavalry to wipe them out. Um, if you've seen any of my let's plays before, um, if you fight this and have an uh, injured army and they do come attack you, uh, you can still win that fight. It's not hard. Uh, you just have to use your uh, faction unique inf uh, cavalry here because these guys have fatigue immunity so they can run around the map forever and you can kite them outside of your city. The goal is basically not let them in and let your arrow tower whittle them down. And that's actually not a bad strategy to fight them early. Um, but we are trying to do this cleanly and without cheesing too much. Uh, even though some of you might think this is a cheese. Uh, and I admit it's a bit of exploit. You're exploiting how strong generals are on romance mode. But since I am a romance mode player, um, I don't mind. This is utilizing my generals to the max. It's not like I'm coming out of this with a clean bill of health. These guys are going to be both about half health. Um, the good news here is Ma uh, Teng is a bit risky in terms of how much morale uh, he might drop. So you got to watch to make sure Ma Teng doesn't lose too much health. Uh, Pang De on the other hand is unbreakable because he has a, tr a trait that gives him unbreakable. So you don't have to worry about him fleeing from the battlefield. Ideally, most of the fight will happen around here because the range doesn't reach to this area. So we're going to be doing a lot of our charges. I see they're pulling back. We're going to get ready here. And we want them to clump together, right? On these narrow corridors, we want them to clump together. We want to give a nice charge to kill as many people as possible because most of the damage is done by our horses. All right, we can wait here a little bit. Let's get the timings right. And we're just going to be, you know, charging into these clumps, uh, unleashing our abilities, and then rest and re rinse and repeat. So that was a terrible charge. We can do better here. So we're going to 
That's much better. This one's going to hurt more because they... Oh, come on. Charge. There we go. Basically, we're trying to get charge damage. And then we're going to try to get, get our abilities done. And once we get our ability done and get our charge done, we can even pull back a little bit and wait. Oh, if they start routing, though, you chase. Right? You want to chase till they wave the white flag. Because every unit you can knock out it's uh, much more advantageous for you. Just watch out you don't chase into arrow tower range. Usually you shouldn't. Uh, if you notice you are going to then just pull back. You chase till they wave the white flag and you rinse and repeat with every unit. Uh, they don't have any spear units so there's no charge reflector on them. Alright so once you're done stop chasing. We don't need the kills. We just want to keep our guys fresh. Uh, wait till they clump up a little bit. They're gonna they're gonna clump up into a line, and that's when you do most damage with your uh, charge attack. Uh, the roar is not back. The roar is actually the best move against these guys because what you're trying to beat is their morale. You're not gonna kill all these guys, so I'm gonna pull back a little bit, get them grouped, and then get another charge. And you see this one, they're not routing as much because they have morale. The other group, because of the roar effect, they ran out of morale. So we just pull back and then rinse and repeat. And I'm going to cut this out because there's really nothing much to show. Uh, they're all going to be around here and we're going to keep running them down until they all route because of uh, the morale damage we've done to them. And we take the city without any casualties and hopefully with our both generals above half health. So see you guys post battle. Alrighty, so uh, we were patient with that fight and we actually didn't lose that much health on uh, either generals, which is pretty good. So let's occupy here. And that satisfied that mission. And we're going to get this uh, next mission here. This is the most critical mission for any faction in the early game. It's where you get rewarded with your economy grows, which is a three turn of minus 20% construction cost, minus one construction time. This is critical to setting yourself up for a nice economy early on to support more military and all the good things like that. Uh, we also get more experience, but we are actually going to restrain from uh, building anything because we're not yet ready to take advantage of those three turns. I have something more important with the money that we are making. So first, Pangdu here, we're going to give him reach for campaign movement range. Um, although we could also get this same skill, uh, Ma Teng, who is currently our leader, we're going to give Ma Teng Guile. The extra 25% ambush chance, as well as the guerrilla deployment, is going to be very important going forward. So we're going to get Guile on uh, Ma Teng, and obviously we're going to flip the command here. And we can uh, almost end turn. Uh, we actually don't have anything else to do. We can look at the city. We have a yellow turban version of the state workshop. It gives the same amount of income. It just doesn't give the discount for blue buildings. So we would likely switch this. Uh, it's only one turn to convert 300 gold. Um, this is probably what we're going to use to activate our quest, um, the mission to build something. But right now we're not going to build anything. We're going to save our... Um, uh, mission for a later uh, activation when we have the money to start building up um, buildings in both Jincheng and Wudu. Uh, right now what we're going to do is just put our uh, third characters, which we haven't talked about yet, on assignment. We're going to let her uh, boost our income from industry because we're not building anything. There's no point to do supervised construction. We're just going to do this, uh, help boost this 100 to 130, which is quite nice. And we're going to get ready to fight uh, Gongdu next turn. There's actually many possibilities here. Um, sometime Gongdu will fight this fight and continue to go down and attack Zhang Lu down here in Hanzhong. Sometime he'll fight this fight and encamp himself in front of your uh, city in Wudu. Uh, both of these are preferred options. Sometime he takes a third option, which is what we don't want to see, is he takes this fight and then he goes out all the way to the copper mine. That's what we don't want us to do. Because once he gets there, we're not strong enough to siege him out in the copper mine and he will recruit a nice big army to fight us. So that will be tough. Uh, we don't want to see that happening. Uh, but if it does happen, we have a way around it. And uh, let's talk about our characters uh, next turn, the third character that we have. Let's just enter and see what he does right now.
So we got a mission to destroy Gongdu, but uh, as you probably saw, uh, what we didn't want to see happened. So we have to regroup here, and we have to basically prepare for a giant invasion from uh, Wudu in maybe, uh, I'm guessing, four to five turns. He will recruit a third general and have a full stack of that general, and he'll march out and attack us. And we're going to defend Wudu. Uh, so we can adjust our playstyle. Uh, in this case, we're gonna get an army ready to fight him, and we have new characters here. Uh, Yang Bo, he's a sentinel, uh, quiet. So he's actually a good spy. Uh, he's willing to spy, and quiet is the best spying trait. Uh, but we don't have the money to spare right now. What we're gonna do in turn two uh, is pull a diplomacy move. Uh, but before we do that, we have to fix our family tree. So we know we have these three characters. Other than these three characters, we also have our son, Ma Chao, who is 14 years old. So it take him 20 turns to come of age and have active abilities in the air slot. So usually we replace this slot with our wife, which is usually what I tend to do in a lot of our campaigns. But in this case, our wife have a greater purpose. Um, we're going to use her as bait to get us Lu Bu. Yeah, you heard that right. We're going to get Lu Bu. So we're going to divorce her here. A thousand gold to divorce. A little pricey, but think of it as recruitment cost. And now she is a distant relative because she used to be our wife, ex-wife here. So we can use her for a marriage bait. And we're going to do just that with Dong Zhuo. So now we're going to hit diplomacy. Talk to Dong Zhuo. Receive a marriage from him. We want Lu Bu. And we're going to offer up our wife. And confirm. And look, he's happy to give us Lu Bu. That's, that's the price of Lu Bu being sold to us. And we can even build up a bigger relationship with Dong Zhuo. And he's also very rich, so we can use this to give ourselves some money. Um, usually I prefer to take the per turn payment. Oh, we had it perfect, but I messed it up. Mm. So now we have to whittle it down a little bit. Twitchy fingers, click too fast. Come on. Almost there. There we go. Alright, so we're going to get 1,740 gold. We're going to build up uh, military access with Dong Zhuo. And we're going to double our uh, relationship with him, basically. And some of you might be wondering, you know, Dong Zhuo, shouldn't we fight him? Um, isn't he a threat? Uh, well, honestly, he's not really a big threat. Uh, if we look at the map here, and we look at ownership, the issue with Dong Zhuo is he holds um, Chang'an, which has the child emperor. So if we go to war against him now and we take Chang'an, then we inherit the emperor, and which is a big problem for us because what we're going to do about all the Han Empire? Every other faction on the map is going to attack the Han Empire, and then in turn, they're going to attack us. So we don't want to have the burden of guarding this child emperor. We're going to leave that to Dong Zhuo. Uh, what we're going to do uh, going forward, our plan here is to wipe out Gongdu and use Gongdu's land as a jumping board to come in here and take over Liu, Yang, Liu Yan's land. Liu Yan is Liu Zhang's dad, who is still in power right now. And we're going to take over Chengdu. Uh, once we take over Chengdu, which is going to be our bread basket, and also uh, there is uh, armor smith over here, which is quite nice. Once we secure that, we can turn on Dong Zhuo and Han Sui, who are our allies right now. Uh, who are friendly with us and we're going to cycle back up take the high empire territory down here and take over the west that's our plan and once we secure the west we push out and take the child emperor then but right now they are buddies and what should we do preparing for the invasion mm, we have Liu Bu now so the problem with having Liu Bu and why we waited till turn two to marry him even though you could marry him into our side on turn one is that he has absolutely no satisfaction because he has incredibly high amount of desire for higher court office. This is partially due to him being level 7 and also because he has disloyal as a trait. So the only way out here for us is if we make him our heir and get Ma Chao out of the way. And that's okay. So we have to make him heir. And you can't make heirs on your first turn. So you have to wait till turn 2 to do this. This, this strategy doesn't work on turn 1. So we make him our heir, 
and Ma Chao is just our son now. Uh, we can make him heir later, but Lu Bu is a pretty good heir. Uh, he has a unique uh, tagline, uh, background here. Uh, more damage for Shock Cavalry, which is something we're definitely going to abuse and higher morale in enemy territory. Not the best boost, but it's something. And also, since he's level 7, you get all these skills, including another flexibility. So now we're up to 50% redeployment cost discount, which is going to be key as we're going to summon Lu Bu out uh, to join us very soon. And he has all these extra damage. So pretty good. Uh, so hopefully we're going to add Lu Bu to this army uh, next turn. Uh, we don't need him this turn. Uh, we're not going to get attacked yet. Uh, we're not going to recruit a new character. But since they did go back to Wudu, uh, copper mine so we're not going to be spending money fighting um, I'm trying to debate whether we need, should convert this or not and activate that quest perhaps not because we still need a ton of cash to summon Liu Bu out onto the field so we're going to wait off on that um, so the key to turn 2 get Liu Bu and then we can go to turn 3 um, we can stay in the city. The city is a nice fighting slot if he does come down. So let's continue. All right. So this is turn three. Uh, nothing happened uh, di diplomatically. Nothing. No item. No. Nothing new. Uh, this turn we're going to basically summon Liu Bu to join our army. It's going to cost us four thousand gold because he has this heavy sea down cavalry unit. Uh, this this unit is not even that good. Our unique unit's much better. Uh, but the game does give these units a much higher auto resolve um, chance. So what we're going to do is just let them replenish up. We're going to take the hit in terms of um, per turn gold upkeep. It's actually quite a lot. It's 430. Hmm. Maybe we don't need this. We definitely want to keep our cavalry. Mm, let's get rid of these guys. I want to build up somewhat of an economy. We're going to give him our cavalry once we have the money. And this is why we didn't build anything. Because then we'll be wasting turns. Because we don't have enough cash to actually uh, take advantage of that mission. And that mission is still going to be here uh, in the future. So this is fine. Uh, we just continue now. Uh, actually, yeah, we can continue. Alright, turn four. Uh, we have oh a huge list of characters. Okay, including some key strategists here, uh, which we do want because uh, we want strategists to get tribuches. Obviously, those are really good. Maldi, uh, this skill tree is very attractive because you're one away from resourcefulness and you already have night battle. Uh, cunning is quite low. 62 is pathetically low. Uh, he's also young, so that's good. And he doesn't have any past loyalty, so he's not a spy. Uh, tai Yung, um, this tree is not as good. Right, you're two skills away from getting resourcefulness. You don't have composure. Uh, you're ambitious. Uh, fondness to or don't draw. Also, never work for anyone. But much higher cunning, 70 instead of 62. And lastly, we have Sun Qian. Uh, if you've seen our lore series, this is the Sun Qian that joins Liu Bei. Uh, he has a unique background, upstanding loyalist. So he gets a much higher cunning stat here, 15 points from this, and it's reflected here in 88. But his skill tree is just woefully bad. We can probably pick him up and have him be a Simon person for a while until we get him to have uh, the right skills activated. Then we can pull him into an army. So he's a long-term investment and we're going to make that investment on him. Because he's actually worth it because he's uh, more stats from being a semi-unique character. Alright, so we added a strategist. Uh, but we're not going to be able to fit him into this army, and that's okay. And that's why we don't have enough money, but if we spend 300 here, we're going to have 1,500 to work with next turn. And that's barely enough to get the inn up. So we also want to upgrade this horse pasture. So we're going to wait a turn. We're still not building anything. Uh, we're waiting for them to come attack us. This army here is enough to beat back even three full stacks from them. So no no problem there. We're going to pick up our new first reform. So the direction of uh, Ma Teng's faction, what I recommend is actually go heavy on the red. Um, what I recommend is you first take this, obviously. This is the one you need to take in the red. 
and then I tend to go down this route here to secure another 20% redeployment cost. Uh, this will up us to 70%. Um, and then there's another 20 here down the line once we, we get there. But you definitely want to go down this route, pick this one up, and then you want to go down here, uh, basically go for that replenishment. So a lot of these red uh, reforms to pick up and focus on military because that's what you're good at. You're going to use um, your cavalry to your full advantage to try to win these fights and carry uh, you guys. Building economically here is not easy. You need to win fights first. So let's continue. All right, Don't Draw loves us so much. He's offering us to become his vassal. We're going to say no. All right, so we picked up an uh, item, wooden dog on this turn. Um, we could probably give him the wooden dog and give Lu Bu the rooster for extra damage. So once again, they're probably going to be attacking us very soon. We could peek out and take a look at how replenished their army is. Uh, but we, I don't believe we need to build any additional unit. Uh, we're going to utilize the town to our advantage to wipe them out when they attack us. Um, if they siege us, it could get a little tricky though. Um, let's see what happens. But right now we're going to start taking advantage of our, that mission. And we're going to convert this and then we're going to pop that mission and use our money next turn to start building up our uh, commanderies. And let's continue. All right, so we activated that mission. Uh, we can turn to full build on mode and then we also need to... Next mission is to uh, recruit two more units. Uh, we're not going to do this right away. Uh, we also got some new characters. Oh, we got one lady here. She has a grudge against Sun Jian. Okay, so she's not a spy. She has a really good tree though. Greedy. Greedy is a little tough because the desire for higher office, the desire for independence administrator. Kind-hearted is pretty good. Strong is so-so. Pretty high cunning. Level 4. Maybe not. We don't have a slot in the army for her, so probably don't need her right away. Alright, so what we're going to build here is the inn is the next building we're going to build in this uh, commandery. And then we're going to use the remaining turns to upgrade the town. Because this is only taking one turn. Over here, we're going to upgrade the horse pasture uh, for more discounts on upkeep of cavalry units. And you see, they're coming out. They're encamped here. Um, they recruited a new general. They pumped out a full retinue of units. Uh, they switched some of their units, which is great news for us because remember we said they had three horseback huntsmen and we can't take care of those well they got rid of two of them there's only one left so this is much more doable they have one fast unit who could challenge our uh town riders in the beginning but after that uh, we can loot them around in the city we can use our excellent generals to do their generals so this should be no problem and we can just continue because we have issued all our building commands all right so we get a pick between dutiful or disloyal um i'm actually gonna go with dutiful here because i don't need the relationship to deepen between ma Teng and lu bu because i don't think we're gonna keep them in the same army going forward and ma Teng and pang de can stay together so we're gonna go dutiful here this is gonna just help them build up to becoming oath thorns so the unexpected happened Instead of coming to us, they went after Zhang Lu. So that leaves their only territory, the Copper Mine, wide open for the taking. So we're going to march out and go take the Copper Mine. Uh, got a Stone Rat. Um, we don't need to give that to any of them, actually. Even though it probably helps him a little bit more. Let's give it to him. This will just hold on. We'll give it to who has low satisfaction. All right, Sun Tian. There we go. So that was a little surprising. They went straight for Han Zhong. Uh, we could follow them. That's also another plan, but that's this opportunity we have to seize. So here we have all these building options. They all take three turns. We're going to utilize our uh, discount to build this. Uh, we still have two turns of it. Next turn. Uh, we can use our extra cash to rush it 
uh, if we want. If we want to pop some other building down, but I don't think we'll have enough money for that. So we'll see depending on if we can make money from grabbing the copper mine or not. But we're going to be going towards the copper mine right now. We can take it next turn. Alright, so um, that's going to be next turn. I'm actually going to cut this guide now because I feel like you guys have a good feel of what the early game is. Um, I could play this more, but it would become a let's play. The idea early is to um, fight the first two fights super cleanly, get Liu Bu into your army, uh, use that strength uh, to stay in the town because the town provides you a really good defense against uh, invading army from Gongdu. And you just want to adapt after the first turn to see which way Gongdu goes. Uh, in this case, we're taking his territory, we're taking the copper mine. If he had come attack us right away, we would have fought him and destroyed him and taken the copper mine afterward. But here, he's doing us a favor. He's going to try to go wipe out uh, Han Zhong for us. So after we take this, we can go take this territory without declaring war on Zhang Lu. And then we're going to go south. The goal is to capture all these territories quickly. Uh, you can do this by using uh, Lü Bu as a solo army. Just use him by himself. Go capture a lot of these unguarded commanderies. And then you know, you're going to come out pretty injured. From fighting all those um, infantry units but you can just recall him and then summon him back the next turn at full health and you can use that trick where you uh, have a second general let's say you have Sun Qian you summon him uh, and you get rid of his retinue so in the future it's free summoning and then you summon him and then you summon Liu Bu and you withdraw recall Sun Qian the same turn then Liu Bu comes out with full movement so you can keep him moving every single turn and try to conquer the south, uh, the southwest here. Secure yourself a nice safe base here with the river. And then you can turn your attention north and clean out this territory. And then once you secure the choke here uh, in the po trade port, you can hold off to going to the central plain. You can then turn your attention farther south, grab this nice rich land from uh, Shi Hui. This is the Jiao province and secure yourself all the spices here because you're going to have the silk here and the spices here and Ma Teng. If you remember, Ma Teng's um, protector of the West gives 100% extra income from silk and spice. That's the basis of your economy. And then you can secure yourself the West and then push out and you can win the game pretty easily from there. So that's how you play Ma Teng's early game and see you next time on the next guide. Uh, let me know who you want the guide to be and I'll get working on that. So see you next time. Bye.